So good morning everyone. For those of you who are new here, my name is Christina and I usually do videos that are related to homesteading, canning, uh, recipes, gardening, that kind of stuff. And occasionally I will do a vlog in, um, you know, just kind of talking about some personal things. So that is what today's video is all about. Today is my 45th birthday and I decided that in honor of that, I would do five fun facts about myself. I will do my absolute best to not ramble, which I do tend to do, and I made a little note to try and stay on track. But for those of you that do not want to stick around and listen to stupid little things about myself, I completely understand. But for everyone else, let's get started. So, fact number one, I wanted to be a cultural anthropologist. When I was right around 11, 12 years old, I read uh, a book by an author named Jean M. Owl. The book was Clan of the Cave Bear. And I absolutely fell in love with not only her writing, but her content which was really adult and racy. And as I've looked back over the years and reread the books, um, I realized that at that time I missed a lot of the finer points of the story, which was probably a good thing given how young I was. But um, I absolutely fell in love with that book and could not wait to read the next one and then wait for, you know, all of the rest of the books to um, be published and it was a long wait but well worth it so the second book that or book series that I um, read at that same time were the Dragon Riders of Pern series by Anne McCaffrey and even though it was fantasy based there were um, such cultural uh, uh, tidbits that McCaffrey came up with for that entire world that were just so rich and such an enjoyment for me. And um, I didn't know what the word was at that time and, you know, later discovered that it would have been uh, anthropology or cult cultural anthropology, you know, studying how all of those things came to be. Um, so I actually took courses in college of all different kinds, um, you know, from Mesoamerica to, you know, ancient, um, you know, beginning times. Um, but, you know, what do you do with a degree in cultural anthropology? And that became the question of, you know, what do you do? How are you going to support your family off of this? And so um, I veered away from that. Fun fact number two. I was homeschooled and now, um, and my kids were homeschooled and now three of my grandkids are being homeschooled. So my mom always intended to homeschool me and circumstances that arose when I was five and ready to go into kindergarten um, just kind of, paved the way that I went into public school for a brief time. And um, when I was in, I was junior high age, must have been like seventh, right going into seventh grade, um, my mom went ahead and pulled me out and we did traditional homeschool, I wanna say for two years. And then I was enrolled in um, American school which is a correspondence course, and through it you get an actual accredited, you know, it's an accredited program, so you get an actual diploma. And I finished that course in about three years, graduated a year before my graduating class if I had stayed in public school and got a diploma. And um, it was a really great program for me, and I enjoyed it. Um, so fun fact number three, I had home births with all of my children. 
my mom was a midwife and so it was just natural for me to want to have my babies at home. Obviously I could have gone with another option if I wanted to, but why would I want to? I mean, come on, home birth. Who doesn't want to have a baby at home? Oh, no, I know that that's not for everyone, and um, but it was the right fit for me. And to this day, when I look back on each and every one of my births, Okay, so that's another tidbit about me, is I, oh boy, so that's another tidbit about me. I do tend to get very emotional. Holy cow. Okay, this is not turning out at all like I expected it to. Okay, so I don't know how much of that I'm going to share or if I'm just going to cut it all out here and I'm starting over. But... I was starting to talk about fun fact number three, or maybe I already did. I'm not sure where I'm at on this. <laughs> and I get so emotional, which is just hysterical, um, that, you know, I'm just sitting here in front of the computer talking, and it makes me emotional. So, I'm going to try this again. So, on my fun fact number three, I had home births with all of my children. I cannot imagine having done it every any other way i mean like it just was hands down what was the best thing for me um i'm very lucky my mom is a midwife and um i also am trained as a midwife and um, obviously i was not when i had my first child i was actually a teenage mom i was 15 when my oldest daughter was born and um while I was in labor, my cousin Jenny, who also was pregnant, she was due about three months after me. She was at uh, that birth. And I can remember that, like, I was having contractions. And I, sometimes even in the middle of having the contraction, and I would just start having this commentary, like this running dialogue of, what it felt like and you know just which was I think I realized afterwards or maybe even knew in that moment um as I'm not going to talk about two career choices that I wanted I think I realized in that moment that I also wanted to be a midwife and um actually three career choices because I also love teaching I love teaching people things um so as I digressed for a minute but so I had home births with all of my kids. My oldest daughter was born in 91. Her name is India Marie. And um, she paved the way, literally, for everyone else. <laughs> Labor was long. Because I had nothing else to compare it to. Um, I didn't realize how long or how difficult it actually was. Because I had never had a baby before. Um, my pushing stage was extensive. She was, um, I won't go into all the technical terms, but her head was cockeyed. And so she came down, it could not come through correctly um, at the angle it was supposed to come through. So she came out with a really um, pronounced cone head. Um, so, you know, I was pushing and pushing and pushing for, for all those hours with her coming at an improper um, angle. But at that point, there was really not a whole lot we could do about it. Um, you know, if I had been in the hospital, they probably would have done a cesarean section, especially given my age and my size. Um, but um, so that was India. So three years, two and a half, three years later, Daniel came along. And remembering India's birth and that long pushing stage, um, and also just the positional things. I was on a birth stool that time, and when it came time to push, I mean, I did like I did with India, and I put my all behind it, and my mom was turning and was not even gloved up yet, and um, she's kneeling on the floor in front of me, and as she's turning to, to get gloves on, and we're thinking, you know, I get a couple pushes and start getting a head crowning and then be ready. And I pushed, and he just came out, and she turned around. And she said, hello, baby. 
he just right on, right on uh, out. So, um, didn't have any pushing issues. Um, so Sersha came about four years later and I uh, had a couple of friends that I wanted to attend my birth. One of them never had children. She was from Ireland and um, an older woman and her husband was disabled and they just never had kids. And she's actually the one that basically named my son. We had asked her to give us three traditional Irish names for boys and for girls, none of which I could really pronounce or spell. We had them on the refrigerator and his name literally was picked because two, two things. One, I could spell it the easiest, or sorry, one, I could pronounce it the easiest out of the others, and two, it means freedom. And um, I just absolutely love it. It's a perfect fit for him. But, um, so that was one of the friends that was coming, and the other one was uh, a lady from church who was a dear friend of ours, and she had a few weeks before, maybe a couple of months before, attended um, another birth where my mom was the midwife, and that baby was actually born silent. And so I had wanted um, Linda to come and, um, you know, have a healing uh, birth that she could go to where it was a, you know, a positive outcome. And, um, you know, and I know that by that time I knew that I, you know, I just do so well with pregnancy and birth. And I just wanted her to have a good experience. My son came so quickly, we didn't even know if anyone was going to make it there in time. Um, but both ladies made it, and we live-streamed the birth. As far as I know, that was the first live-streamed home birth on the internet. Um, I mean, I had never heard of one before that, and then obviously, you know, as the years went on, more and more had occurred, but as far as I know, that was the first live-streamed home birth. and. Um, I'll put his, the spelling of his name in the description down below because it's a fun one. Um, so then my last baby was Liberty and she was born in Wisconsin. We had, we moved while I was pregnant with her and she came five years after Sersha and uh, she was born, oh, another fun fact. Well, let me finish saying that. So Libby was born during a snowstorm I'll do a whole thing on her birth another time. But uh, yeah, she was born during a snowstorm on the floor of the kid's bedroom. And um, Daniel ran the video camera. Sersha did heart tones with the uh, external fetal monitor. My daughter, India, who was just shy of being 13, got to um, catch the baby. My mom was overseeing everything, of course. And uh, Joey, who is my brother, and I didn't really talk about him, but we'll discuss him another time. He He's two years younger than my daughter, India. He was born when I was 17. But um, he was there and he examined the placenta afterwards. And it was just an absolutely lovely birth. Just lovely. So, to go back around on all the kids really quick, India was born on Earth Day, April 22nd. Daniel was born on St. Patrick's Day, which is a lovely, um, you know, just nod in our Irish heritage. Liberty was born on uh, Groundhog's Day, February 2nd, and during a snowstorm. Okay, so as life of a mom goes. I've had to stop a few times, go pick up a kid from college, make some food, take care of the animals. So I'm getting back to this. You can come through, Sarah. If you're done, you can come through. Oh, it's okay. This is real calm, eh? She doesn't like to be picked. She's a rescue cat. Fun fact number four. Even though I live in town, very urban, schools around me, parks around me, I'm in a well-established neighborhood, I have 
a large collection of animals. My house is about 1,100 square feet. There are five people that live in this house and we are outnumbered by animals by a lot. So we have my dog Lucy, who is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Kame is one of our adult cats and that means turtle in Japanese and I'm probably butchering it so I apologize. Then we have our other adult female which is the mom to the kittens because she got pregnant before we could get her fixed and so we kept all the kittens but um, my mama cat her name is Numa Numa and we kept all four of her babies that she you know unexpectedly had back in March and um, a couple of them have music themes so the two boys are Creed from uh, the band and Fred who is every Fred that I've ever loved whether it's music related actor related Fred it just I just absolutely love it and then the two girls are Stella and um, Kishimu another Japanese word I can't recall what it means and I've probably butchered that then we have our chickens so I have altogether 13 chickens. I have two roosters, which were both unplanned roosters, but that's what you get sometimes. And then I have 11 hens. All of them are song related names. And so I'm not going to go through every last one of them in the video, but I'll go ahead and put it down in the description. Um, with the exception of one, I have a little white uh, female, and I'll put their breed down in the description as well. But I have a little white female, and her name is Martha Stewart. Um, and then all the rest are uh, related to music. So anyways, another fun fact, I collect animals. And we are at full capacity. Final fun fact about me. Fun fact is actually a two-part. I collect G.I. Joe and Ken dolls, and I collect anatomically correct baby dolls. Usually the G.I. Joe and Ken dolls, I find at secondhand stores naked. They just come without clothes. But the funny thing is that the anatomically correct baby dolls always have a diaper put on them when I find them at the secondhand stores, which is just kind of mind boggling to me. Um, but maybe I'm I'm a little bit more liberal or open or natural minded um, in the way that I view the the body. But um, so yeah, kind of an interesting thing to collect. I know one of the things that we like to do with them is if you've ever watched a movie and there's what is called Easter eggs, so you find them like like an Easter egg. So we take these. I'm sorry, I have. Uh, clouds that keep going in front of the sun and so as the lights filtering in and out of the windows that are behind the camera it's doing these funny shadows but um so we take these dolls and they are kind of hidden around the house in odd places that you would not expect to find a naked male barbie doll and so i guess i have more of a sense of humor than um i would have realized and I, well, you know what, thinking about the the names I named my animals and um, the Barbie doll thing. Um, you know, I have a shelf of anatomically correct baby dolls. Yeah, I think I have a sense of humor. So, um, anyways, that's the, that's the <laughs> fact about me. So when I was setting up to do this video, I was going to do it outside and I have a lovely back porch. I took the camera out there and it is, it rained last night so it's cold, it's wet, it's very windy and because it's morning, school, um, well now it's not rainy because the sun has come out which is why it's doing that with the clouds, but um, the school activities next door the head start and so all the little kids are out there screaming so it's really loud so i decided to not do the video outside and rather come inside so i picked what i am sitting in front of on purpose there's i think every fun fact that i named 
has some sort of, um, there's something that's connected to that right where I am sitting. So the chair that I'm sitting on is actually a birth stool. And if I move, oh, my coffee cup. So behind me, I have the Gene M, um, Gene M. Al books, and I have Anne McCaffrey books, and so I have homeschool books down on the bottom shelf. Like I said, I'm sitting on a birth stool. Animals are running around, and there is a G.I. Joe doll on the shelf. And I can see that the camera is not quite adjusted enough to show where it's at. So let me move it a little bit and see if um, I can share that fun, uh, fun little tidbit with you all. So let's see what we can do here. Well, it's somewhere. Somewhere on that shelf is a G.I. Joe. And this is one of the uh, birth stools. And they make great little, they make great little chairs to sit in. Now you can see the rest of my messy house. So, <laughs> and my, oh yeah, as I'm looking at the bookshelf, I have an eclectic collection of things. Um, you know what, I'll have to do another fun facts about me later on, or if anybody has any questions about anything that you see on the bookshelf behind me and how it relates to anything in my life, personal beliefs, um, you know, just the educating of anything, or I don't know. Um, some things I collect just because they are pretty, and um, they may have a completely different meaning for somebody else or a different purpose that that is not what I'm in, you know, that is not what I'm using it for. So, um, hopefully I don't have anything back there that is offensive, but anyways, <laughs> anyways, that was five fun, really drawn out facts about me today on my 45th birthday, AKA my fifth birthday as life begins at 40. And it's gonna make me emotional again thinking about it. So before I start crying or making a fool of myself, I am going to say goodbye for now. Thank you all for watching. If you have not already subscribed, please hit the button below. Give me a thumbs up so that others can know that this is a video that they should watch. Hit that bell notification if you do subscribe so that when new videos do come out and I will get better about putting them out but so then when new videos do come out you will get notified immediately as always have a beautiful day and I'm going to go plan what kind of cake I want these kiddos to make me so have a lovely day everyone thanks again bye for now